He's um, contemporaneous with Shakespeare. Uh, so he's early 17th century Spanish poet. Now, to be able to choose Gongora out of that particular time in Spain as the poet is significant in itself because that's exactly the same time that we have Cervantes writing Don Quixote, uh, Lope de Vega rivaling Shakespeare with um, his famous comedias or three-act plays. His work created a sort of watershed in Spanish poetics, created a huge polemic around the relationship between poetry in the world, poetry in the state. What we understand by political poetry is uh, someone who's writing about the general elections or writing about a topic that we call politics. Um, that's not the way it worked in the Renaissance. He was a poet very much at the centre of the political world, but he was um, an ecclesiastic, he was a cleric, but he spent quite a lot of time in, in and around the court in Madrid. But all poetry is political in the sense that it inspires us to think about the world and the structures that we live in. You're at a point in history where the Spanish Empire, uh, or we, we can trace, I suppose, the beginnings of a decline in the Spanish Empire. Language is a vehicle of empire. It has to, in some way, be unifying and pure if it's got to be exported. And what Gongora did was um, celebrate darkness, uh, celebrate uh, lack of signification, um, words disconnected from meaning and that once you do that if words can mean anything then they can also have heretical meaning and they can become dangerous so it's a it's a political in that sense in that he stirs up a, an altered consciousness of language and what language is capable of doing that his adversaries were trying to suppress It reminds me of the, like the beats, like with the bros and yes, people that got like yes. consciously messing with Consci them. Con yeah. And that is just a, a perfect way of summing it up. He is consciously messing with the language and that's what he was accused of. But he also messes with it beautifully because um, a lot of people have a lot to say about irony and gongra and parody, etc. They often miss the beauty of it because it's also be it's, it's beautifully messed with. And that's what engages you about it. You know, you know that this is deliberately chaotic, this wandering verse with the um, confused structures and grammar, but the ideas and the images that come out of it, the, the immateriality of it, because it's all very material and rooted, but the most profound things he has to say about human nature are immaterial. You know, you're never going to really concretize those. So that's... Um, for me anyway, and everyone's got their own personal engagement with it, that's the most beautiful part of it. The difficulty of reading Gongora for native Spaniards um, has challenges then for the, the translation. And so I suppose what we're trying to do is to make one of Spain's greatest poets um, accessible to a wider audience that mightn't have had the pleasure of coming upon this poet before, and to take them on a journey through his life and through the times of his poetry from the beginning right up to the present day and maybe to understand better contemporary structures of Spanish thought through coming closer to, to the roots of it. John Dent has translated um, into contemporary English some of Gongora's work is very good and there's a sort of seminal translation by Gilbert Cunningham of the Polyfemo that I think does uh, a lot of justice to the spirit of the original. Mm -hmm.